So thank you. I'm Stan Lance. I'm a professor of medicine at UCSF. Uh, as Deborah said, my forte is tobacco, but I've kind of been pulled into the cell phone discussion through uh, because I think it's interesting. Uh, the uh, the first thing I know the people at IARC. I have worked, and I have over three or three hundred fifty publications and several books, since everyone's counting that. Uh, I know the people at IARC. I've worked with the people at IARC. I know Jan Samet, who uh, chaired the committee that listed cell phone radiation as a possible human carcinogen. IARC is impossible to convince of anything. It wasn't until about 1972 that they agreed smoking caused lung cancer. And if IARC is giving it a category 2B, that says there's something to be concerned about. Now, they didn't say it caused brain cancer. They said it was a possible cause. But I think the question people need to ask themselves is, do you want to be doing the natural experiment for 40 years, uh, exposing people to uncontrolled cell phone radiation if it's possibly giving them brain cancer? The, uh, I want to, uh, so I think that the, the earlier speaker really minimized how hard it is to even get a category 2B out of IARC. Okay. The second thing is uh, I find the sperm data very compelling to the point that I'm actually using several of the studies that Deborah talked about and several others as examples in a statistics textbook that's about to be published. And I think, uh, as the earlier speaker said, what you have to do is look at the epidemiology, look at the experimental data, look at the animal data, and when you look at the sperm results, they're quite compelling. What I tell my students is a cell phone isn't good enough to be a contraceptive. But if you, and I told this to my son, if you want to have kids, don't keep it on in your pocket and minimize the use. I have to say, um, I've been shocked at the behavior of the cell phone industry, and in many ways they're behaving like the tobacco companies. They're attacking the science. They're not taking reason. Don't it counts on the time? They're 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 uh, not taking reasonable steps that could be taken to reduce risks, like directional antennas, like she putting shielding on the phones if you have it on your belt so it doesn't broadcast into your body, and and they're fighting. Like the the lawsuit they brought against San Francisco is almost identical to the lawsuit that the tobacco industry brought against the Food and Drug Administration against putting labels on cigarette packages warning people of the dangers. So I think that prudent, I'm not saying cell phones should be banned, I have one, which I have a wired earpiece on to keep it away from my head, and I leave it turned off when I don't need it. And I think that, that there are lots of things you can do with a cell phone to use it so that you get the benefits without the risks. And uh, I think, uh, you know, if you go back in the tobacco issue, Berkeley was the first city in California to pass a local smoking law in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And look, some of you may have been involved in that, I think. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, look where we've come. And I think that the local action by San Francisco, Berkeley, if you choose to do it, and other places to start elevating this issue and getting people to take it seriously is a really, really, really important thing to do. I think there's enough science out there to be worried. Do we know everything? No. I look at the literature on cell phones, and I think it's about where tobacco was in the 50s. You know, there was enough to know that there might be a problem. There were some areas where I'll, I'll be very surprised if the sperm research is reversed. Nobody's looked at the effect on eggs because it's so hard, but I'm sure there are similar things there. And I think it's something that we need to deal with, and I'm very disappointed in the cell phone industry for not behaving responsibly, and instead of fighting these things, working to get solutions. Thank you. In 15 seconds, I want to point out to you here this graph that has been developed, and you will see on the bottom there is no change in incidence recorded for brain cancer in the United States. But on the top, you will see something called the Central Brain Tumor Registry of the United States, which shows an increase in brain cancer. And part of this is a coding issue. If we have time, if you're interested, I can explain more about it. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about you coming in under the impression you have more time. I'm sorry about that.